Hey guys, welcome back to part 24 of the Kotlin tutorial. So your homework in the last video was to uh, give the name parameter of our user class a default value so that each user object to which we don't pass a name explicitly has its name property set to a no name by default. And the syntax is the same as for default argument values and functions. We go behind the name parameter and write equals and then specify the string value we want to set it to. And then the second part was to uh, create another user object, which we call user3. But only pass an h value by using the named argument syntax, which is also the same as for functions. So we don't want to pass a string name, but if we just try to pass the h, we get an error because the compiler is expecting a string as the first argument. But we already know how to handle this. We specify the h argument by its name directly. And when we run this, we now have a third user which is also 60 years old. But since we didn't pass a name value, its username is set to a no name by default, just like we wanted. If we just want to assign the argument value, we get passed through the constructor to a class's property. We should use this short syntax by declaring the property directly in the constructor with val or var. But if we want to do something with the argument's value before assigning it to the property, we have to move this property back into the class's body. So let's say if someone adds unnecessary write spaces to the name argument like this, we want to remove them before assigning the value to the name property. If we would run it like we have it now, all white spaces are contained in the name property and printed to the console. But if we uh, remove the while keyword to turn name back into a normal parameter and instead assign this value to the name property explicitly in the class's body like we had it before, we can for example call functions on this argument. And the string class has a handy function called trim which removes all the white spaces from the beginning and the end of the string and then returns us the result. So we can assign it to our property and when we run it again, we see that the white spaces are now gone. So this way we can do some simple initialization logic. But sometimes this is not enough and we want to add more statements to check the input or just to execute some code whenever we create an instance of this class. Now in Kotlin the constructor doesn't have a body where we could put this code. Instead we have to use a so-called init block, which is a block of code that is executed when this object is created. This is often used to trigger an error when an argument that was passed is invalid. For example if we would try to pass a negative value for an h. But since we haven't looked at errors yet, we will instead do some simple changes on our name value again. So let's add a user 4. But this time we only pass a string with write spaces for the name and the normal age value. And now let's say we also want to take care of this case. When someone passes a bunch of empty spaces, we don't want to keep it like this. Instead, we also want to set it to no name, just as if we wouldn't have passed a name value at all. But if we do pass a name, we want to trim it just as before. So we uh, remove the assignment from the name property and we add an explicit type declaration instead to turn this into just a property declaration. Now as we already know, this gives us a warning because the property needs a value assigned before the object is created, but we don't have to assign this value in the same line as we declare this property. Instead we can go below and write init, which automatically creates this init block with two curly braces. Init stands for initializer, so this is an initializer block. And inside it we can execute multiple statements and access this class's properties and constructor arguments. And it will then run immediately after the constructor, when the object is created. And here we want to check if name.isBlank, which is another function of the string class. This one checks if the string is either empty or only contains white spaces, just what we want. And if you ever want to see a description, of these functions and classes, you can just click on it and press Ctrl Q or F1 on Mac, which opens this little pop-up with the documentation comment. If the string is blank, we want to set the name property to no name. So we write this dot name. We have to use the this keyword because without it, name would refer to the name parameter in the constructor. 
When we use this, we refer to the current instance of this user from inside this class, just like we refer to an instance from the outside by its variable name when we want to access its properties. And then we just set this to a no name. Else, if name is not blank, we want to set this.name to name.trim. And as you can see, the warning from the property disappeared because now it gets a value assigned when the object is constructed. But since name is still a val, we can only assign a value once. So if we go below this if else check and try to assign this.name to a different string, we get our usual warning because a val cannot be reassigned. Let's also print a message here. New user created name colon dollar sign this dot name comma h colon and h for h we don't have to write this because we don't have two different variables with this name so there's no ambiguity okay so let's remove the print lines from our main function and then run it as we can see the init block is executed for each object we instantiate together with the println statement. And as expected, our fourth user has its name set to no name, even though we passed an empty string as the name argument. Now we could have also written this if else statement as an expression, and we could have also assigned it to the name property directly, but I wanted to have a simple example for an init block for this video. But this is your homework. Change this if else statement to an expression and then assign it to the name property directly instead of doing it inside this init block. Now, of course, we can add multiple init blocks and the properties and init blocks we put into a class body get executed top to bottom when we call the constructor. So the order in which we put these in here matters. To show what I mean, let's put a second init block above the name property. Again, we write init. And then we cut out this println from down here and put it into the first init block. As we can immediately see, we now get a warning because we only declared our name property below this init block. And an init block can only access the properties that are declared above it. So the name property is not available up here. Age is available because we declared it in the constructor, but name is only available down here. So let's cut out this part, remove this comma, Add the second println down here where we had it before, where we just print the name. Let's also put a space here and change this to just print so everything is in one line. And we also add a comma behind h so it's properly formatted. And when we run it again, it still works as before, just that we print h and name in a different order. If you have Java experience, you can imagine these two init blocks as one constructor body in Java. And in fact, if we would let the compiler turn this into Java code, it would put these two blocks into the same constructor body in the same order as we define them here. We will take a closer look at this later. Don't forget your homework, which was to uh, turn if else into an expression and assign it to the name property directly. Please leave a like if this was helpful and then we see us in the next part. Take care.